Hello, my name is Devin and welcome to Module 3, Urban and Regional Sustainability Transitions. So today's module focuses a little more on the scholarly ideas of how change happens. Change, of course, is inevitable, but a transition implies a greater level of continuity and control, or at least intention. There have been many theories of change that neglected contextual differences between places in favor of more generalized narratives of progress. In human geography, like most social sciences, there have been big changes from structural thinking to post-structural thinking. Structuralism was the pursuit of finding universal truths, the underlying mechanisms and structures that could explain people and their behavior. These days, we tend to take a more contextual view and look at the particularities of different places, of the people's vulnerabilities, capabilities, and relationships to other places. There's also been a correlation in development thinking from previous ways of describing the world in terms of underdeveloped, developing, and developed countries. One of the problems with this is that there are many goals and many ways to develop. And becoming developed isn't necessarily the end of the story. So for example, the United States has long been held up as, as one of the most developed countries in the world. And yet today it exhibits a lot of the characteristics of what we think of as underdeveloped places. Conversely, a lot of places that until now have been considered underdeveloped are hoping to leapfrog the way that Western countries developed through industrialization and aim for becoming green, shining examples of a new form of development. By starting from specific cities and regions with their associated histories, governing contexts, resources, and relationships, we understand better who the stakeholders are and what changes are possible. The first and third texts for today look at the theory of transition and contemporary thinking about how we can best describe how change happens and influence change in the direction of sustainability. The second text takes a specific example of a biorefinery in Sweden and thinks about what degrees of path dependency there are in dealing with old infrastructure and trying to incorporate new technologies. Sometimes they don't even exist yet. The fourth text, uh, similar to some of the points in Hovard's lecture yesterday, have to do with infrastructure and the impact of the built environment on what possibilities are open to a city for transitioning to sustainability. So I hope you enjoyed today and until next time.